Buddha Dhamma, you know, the Buddha's Dhamma, we don't have any equal words to Dhamma in English. So we use the word Dhamma as well. So the Dhamma sometimes we can say the teachings of the Buddha. But the teachings of the Buddha, the word teaching is not saying anything about the content. So all the content we can't say in a word, in English. So Dhamma also, uh, actually there is a language game, a language puzzle. Uh, according to Buddha, the language is just a tool to get some idea. But our mind understands, our mind perceives and our mind justify the things and sometimes grasp and hang on some concepts. It is 100% personal. That is, the, that our understanding, our concept and the real ex existence of the world some many times not the same thing. That is the ignorance. So, the language also a tool. We give some message to others and we communicate through the language. But the language every time is not the reality. That is just a tool and to explain the reality in the world, the language is insufficient tool. So, but Without language also we can't work. We use, we must use the language as actually in, in skillful meaning. So uh, we must know about that when we are learning Buddhism or any other thing. Actually you think about the man, the man. Also just a concept. Actually, the I, the concept of I, is the ignorance. Because of that concept of I causes the craving and the anger, tanha and dosa, uh, dosa. Then it becomes upadana, a grasping. So that process, we say, we can say the ignorance, the moha, the illusion, illusion. So, the, we must be clear about this point at the beginning. So, anyway, we can understand by our own, we can actualize the Dhamma in our feelings and in our mind. So, the Buddhism, very different from all the other religions in that sense. Actually, the Confucianism in China also made effort, very hard effort to explain and live in this world. But many of the other religions try to live in their own, uh, actually in a hallucination like that, the imaginary world. So that imaginary world has created by the goal. So the beasts are the, actually the blessed group of beings in the world. So the other beings, another tree, another fauna and flora, the whole world under the control of the human kind, the mankind. And at the same time, the man also, the human, all the humans also has distinguished according to the gender and according to the caste. So, that is the imaginary world of many religions. But the Confucianism refused and the Buddha refused. Sometimes you can think about uh, Socrates, about Socrates. He also told all the humans have the same rights and same feelings and same situation, same status. 
but only to the citizens. Who are the citizens? In the time I also misleaded with his teachings, his explanation, his philosophy. So uh, I thought all the citizens have same privileges. Then it is equal to Buddhism, but no. According to that category, the citizen means only the male people, only the male and without slaves and foreigners and ladies. There were only four percentages, percentage of the total population of the uh, state, the city state, were citizens. Then all those, all the others are not citizens. That's all citizens has same privileges, same rights. But that is not equal to Buddhism. So I understood that in a later time. Then uh, many people think Socrates is also some type of Buddha's disciple, or some people say he is Pacheka Buddha, the enlightened one by himself, but not revealed to others, not clear to others, built Buddha like that. But uh, that is not the reality. So uh, we must concern about this few basic things, basic factors. So, uh, the Buddhism says, the illusion of the language many times leads us to some situation beyond the reality, beyond this world. The Buddha's effort was not directed to searching the reality on the world. He taught King Kusala Kavesi what is the beneficial the Pusala, the wholesome. What is the, then he searched for, he sought for the benefit. He was not pursuing the reality in the world. So in that sense, the modern science also pursuing the reality. The scientific, many, many, many things, they like to reveal what is happening. But the Buddha's effort, effort was to search for the benefit, to get the benefit to our life in all the ways, we can say materially and spiritually. The word spiritual also does not make sense according to Buddhism. The spirit, we say, uh, Rico, European, Greco, Judai, Judeo Christian tradition suggest a word spirit. The person, the man lives and he has the senses. After the death, the spirit separate from the body. That spirit, like Atman, like the soul, S O U L soul, like that, the permanent entity, it gets a human figure. After that, the human figure decay, destroy, but the spirit remains. That is the spirit. According to Buddhism, our spirit. So the Buddha used the word in Satipatthana Sutta and in many sutras. He used Ajat Vahid. Ajatam va kaye kayanu pasi viharati. Vahidda va kaye kayanu pasi viharati. Ajatta and Vahid. Ajatta means eternal. Vahidda means the Bahira external. So our body, internal and external. Internal body, external body. Internal world, external world. What is the internal world? What is the external world? Our internal world is the six senses. External world is the objects we perceive from our six senses. I is belonging to internal world. The objects, the forms we are grasping from the eye, the perceiving from the eye are the outer or external world. In the same way the ear and the voice, the sound, ear and the sound, the nose and the tangible, the, uh, the smell, the nose and the smell, and the tongue and the taste, body and the tangible, and the mind and some other uh, sense, some other feelings. 